Thank you for deciding to participate in Swanson University College of Neurosciences survey. Your input of, is of extreme value to us. The human brain is a funny thing, a complex, intricate, puzzling, funny thing. It consists of hundreds of billions of neurons, constantly in action, transmitting and receiving countless messages. The brain is about 15 centimeters in length. However, the part of the brain we are particularly interested in is just over a centimeter long, the amygdala. This section of the brain is responsible for emotions, survival instincts, memory, and most importantly, fear. We have surveyed four willing participants on their worst fears because the human brain will give up anything for money. But our experiment entails more than their three pounds of bundled nerves could ever even imagine. Subject number one, Bethany Dugan, aged 13. Miss Dugan exhibits an irrational fear of the number 13, or triskaid cathophobia. A number can't hurt you. It can't mess you up like the real horrors in life. Yet, some still associate this number with bad luck, instilling a deep fear of it rooted in superstition. And yet there is an even more trivial fear than that. Subject number two, Viola Hemmings, age 14, nyctophobia, an extreme or irrational fear of the night or of darkness. As children, we feared the monsters under our bed that shielded themselves under a curtain of black. The brain fears what it can't understand, and it can't understand what it can't see, leaving us alone and scared in the dark. Subject number three, Laura Thompson. Age 14, Miss Thompson exhibits a fear many have heard about but few truly understand. Claustrophobia, the fear of tight spaces. 5% of Americans, including Miss Thompson, experience the panic and anxiety triggered by these small spaces. The last subject, Francesca Reagan. Age 14, acnophobia, a fear of sharp things. For example, a knife. To be afraid of something that could hurt you is understandable, yet still foolish. What's much scarier than the inanimate objects is the people who wield them, who use them to fulfill their own selfishness or vendetta. The human brain is not limited to one sole great fear. Miss Hemings lives with hemophobia, the fear of blood. Triggered by the bloody murder of her mother she witnessed as a child, Miss Hemings cannot handle the mere sight of it without experiencing extreme anxiety and sometimes even physical reactions. Miss Thompson's second fear is something that lingers in the back of her mind from time to time. The fear of taking another person's life the fear of ending all of the dreams and possibilities of another person in one quick, raging moment, having to deal with the shame of it, the guilt of it. Monophobia, a more acute and realistic fear of Miss Reagan's, the fear of being alone, the fear of not having anyone to rely on, Fear of not having anyone to care about you. Of not having anyone to pass the time with. Aquaphobia, the fear of water and drowning. The fear of fighting for air that isn't there. 
and having to accept your death before it happens. About 68% of Americans fear their death. However, by the end of these trials, every single subject welcomed their death with open arms. Thank you for participating in our survey. We will contact you with any further inquiries on the behalf of the Flotton University College of Neuroscience.